Early 2000, a group of Flemish speleologists leaves for the island of Socotra. They want to explore and to map the caves of the island. For this purpose, the Socotra Karst project has been created. During the following years, experts of several disciplines were involved. Today, Peter is overlooking the results of more than seven years of exploration. What started as an eight-strong crew expedition became a team of sometimes more than 20. More than nine expeditions have been accomplished, yet the end is not in sight. After eight years, however, they consider the moment has come to inform the world of their discoveries and findings. So get ready and re-experience their story, unforgettable, adventurous and full of mysteries. Gradually things get shaped. In several ways, funds are collected. Support tickets are sold, film performance is organized. The business community provides some extra support. The marble company supplies the financial scope needed to the forthcoming expedition. The expedition can't be obstructed anymore. The team heaves a deep sigh of relief on seeing the island. It's as if they realize only now what they've started. Nobody knows what is to be expected, while they are the first speleologists to map systematically the cave systems of Socotra. In fact, Socotra is a small archipelago consisting of Socotra itself, the main island and three minor ones. Sama and Darsa, known as the brothers, and Abdal Khuri. The island measures 3,625 square kilometers and is about 110 kilometers long and 40 kilometers wide. It's situated to the northwest of the Indian Ocean. Although it's only 250 kilometers east of Somalia, politically it belongs to Yemen. The first target is a cave called Hok by the local population. One can see its huge entrance from kilometers away, even at sea. After a steep climb, the team reaches the entrance just where the rubble becomes a steep face. A campsite is hardly noticeable in this immense overhanging entrance hole of the cave. This spot also offers the best protection against bad weather conditions and the spectacular view of the azure blue sea about 300 meters below. Out of here, and during several expeditions, the team will try to fathom the underground secrets of these cliffs. The cave extends almost horizontally and penetrates into the mountain wall at a sloping angle about 300 meters under the plateau above. This detailed topographic map is the result of the measuring operations by the speleologists during their first exploration trips. Place names to mark certain zones in the cave, for instance, are given by the ones discovering or mapping them. Okay. Mapping takes a mass of time, but it's essential for further investigations. Toe, koep eens op, maar je wilt dus een verticale doorsnee ook. 
Dus uh, we moeten uh, voilà, even geduld hebben. Het zal direct goed zijn dan. Wel, ik wil het van Eske goed doen ook, want het geeft geen zin. Topographers are often the first ones to admire all the splendor of the cave. The locals never go beyond the reach of daylight, which they assume to be the area of spirits and legends. The team readily understands why they experience it this way. During survey operations of the first expedition, Rudy and Carl happened to find a mysterious wooden tablet deep into the cave. After an exhaustive exploration, it seems to be much more important than thought at first. Here we are on topography. Carl was trying to visit all the time. We are on the wagons. We are looking at something else. Here is the hidden drugstil. As we look, look. Het valt helemaal niet op. Je ziet het bijna niet staan. Iedereen is er waarschijnlijk al voorbij gelopen. Dus ik dat is dan. Waarschijnlijk is het niet zo oud. Want uh, allee, het hout is nog, uh, nog redelijk goed bewoord gebleven. Dus. Maar het is wel fascinerend welke tekst dat er nog staat. The sign appears to be over 1750 years old. It reads as follows. In the month of July. Day 25 of the year 258 AD, I, Abgar, son of Apsmaya, came to the land of the Nisi up till here. May you, the god who has settled here, and you, reading this tablet, commemorate me and leave the tablet on its place. The texts had been investigated by Maria Gorea, a linguist, and Professor Dr. Christian Robin, an expert in the history of the Middle East, both members of the Centre National de la Recherche Scientifique in France. Most probably, Akbar could have been a traveling salesman who possibly came here to pray and to implore a safe trip this cave having been a place of prayer. At about 10 meters beyond the wooden tablet, there's a drawing on the soil made with mud and representing a ship of a considerable size. Socotra probably served as a shelter for seamen, while the sea in this area can be wild and treacherous. Up till now, the sea remains an important source of income for the numerous fishermen who know better than anyone else the insidious character of each wave.
The speleologists have made the experience once during one of their overseas explorations. In no time, enormous waves arose, sometimes literally throwing away their boat. Speleologists, after all, are no sailors. The construction of these boats has proved to be so solid throughout the ages that it's remained almost unchanged nowadays. Julian tries to set down this unique type of construction. This is highly needed in these rapidly changing times. The Socotra cast project offers him the opportunity to investigate the mud-drawn boat more closely. I think by the looks of this, it looks as if this ship could be quite a big cargo carrier and it, it, the size of it is um, immense because you've got quite a, a set of sails. This here, again, um, appears to be like an after castle or somewhere where people could have been staying. We also have the mast here mm -hmm. and it appears up here we could have a uh, crow's nest, crow's a nest, lookout yeah. point, which is yeah. very distinctive. This is all um, we're looking at sort of uh, anything between medieval times going back to uh, second century mm -hmm. AD. Hawk Cave has been used throughout centuries as a place of prayer by several cultures, which manifestly is attested by texts and signs in different languages found over more than three kilometers into the cave. Dirk, have you taken photos of these first, please? Yeah. So this is one of the most important discoveries of today because we discovered a new Indian script in Hock Cave. Up to now only inscriptions in Brahmi were known, but now we have the first inscription in Karoshti, a script which was in use between the 3rd century BC and approximately 3rd century AD in the northwest of India, in modern Pakistan and in Central Asia. And we have here attested a Buddhist name, Upa Li Sa, in the genitive of the language of that region. So it is proven that also people from the northwest of India came to Hock and participated in sea trade activities. Other texts have been written on fragments of rocky soil erected afterwards. Each shape Stalagmite or stalactite was apparently considered to be fit to write down their messages, the contents of which will be analyzed by Ingo. It's hard to conceive that all these underground findings have remained untouched for all these years, although it's easily accessible and the locals have always known it but they've always used the cave only as a natural shelter for themselves and their animals. <laughs> Up till now, caves on Socotra are often used as a permanent or temporary accommodation depending on where people are with their flock. Pottery for provisions found in the cave looks strikingly much like medieval Chinese pottery. Some of these jars are still being used and are of an exceptional quality and workmanship. This cave is an archaeological treasury of which we've discovered only a fraction so far. It's as if time stood still here. A cave is often a perfect place to keep victuals for longer periods. It's also very often a sort of repertory of geological and natural events throughout times.
Nu is Socotra is een plaats met een heel, heel groot uh, endemisme. Dus uh, soorten, planten en dieren die nergens anders ter wereld voorkomen, behalve in Thailand. Thailand is daar dus op dat vlak een, een zeer rijke plaats. Een beetje de Galapagos van de Indische Oceaan noemt men uh, Socotra wel eens. Nu dankzij het Socotra Karst project hebben we al enkele jaren ook onderzoek kunnen doen in die grotten. En in plaatsen kunnen komen waar normaal een bioloog niet komt. Daar zijn uh, verschillende nieuwe soorten voor de wetenschap ontdekt. Enkele jaren terug heeft het Socotra Karst project een fossiel gevonden van een vleermuis. Die waarschijnlijk slechts enkele tienduizenden jaren oud is en die dateert van een periode waarin er een iets meer tropisch klimaat op Socotra aanwezig is. Een soort van vliegende hond eigenlijk en geen vleermuis die nu nog op Socotra aanwezig is die daar in de grotten is aangetroffen. Fossils as well as living fauna prove the exceptional natural resources the island still has. In een grot vinden we uh, verschillende groepen, zowel in het zoetwater als eigenlijk ook op de bodem van de grot. Maar andere zijn kleine spinachtigen en kevertjes die op de bodem slopen en die alweer in veel gevallen uniek zijn voor Socotra en vaak ook uniek voor het grottensysteem zelf. Expedition leader Peter investigates what the climate has been like in former times helped by secondary carbonate deposits, such as stalagmites and stalactites, also called speleothemes. Nu, een ander uh, heel groot voordeel van uh, de speleothemen, of de stalagmieten in dit geval, is dat ze dateerbaar zijn. Je wil dus perfect kunnen weten in de tijd wanneer was het natter, wanneer was het droger. Hey, we kunnen dat dus overal ter wereld doen, maar Socotra is net van dat belang. Het is een eiland in het midden van de oceaan. Het is dus de enigste locatie op deze plaats op de aarde waar we terrestrische of landelijke, als we het zo wilt noemen, regen zullen kunnen registreren in het midden van de oceaan. Buiten dat feit komt er hier de moerson twee keer per jaar langs. De moerson beïnvloedt actueel meer dan de helft van de wereldbevolking en natuurlijk ook de economie van de wereld. Het is dus van belang om te weten hoe in het verleden de moerson geëvolueerd is, welke parameters een invloed hebben op die regen en die droogtes. Als we daar eigenlijk de sleutel kunnen uitachterhalen, dan kunnen we ook naar de toekomst voorspellingen gaan doen. Dit is het onderzoek dat we hier actueel bezig zijn. Dus dat is nog een actief groeiende. Je kunt zien, de calcite is vers. De bemonsterde speleothem stond iets verder. Dat is gewoon een rubber ring met daarop een glazen plaatje. En de actuele calcificatie, de calcite afzetting, kijk, dat valt er mooi op. Dat wordt hierop mm -hmm. bemonsterd. Apart from Hawk Cave, measurements have also been made on several other places scattered over the island. Socotra appears to be a true paradise for speleologists. Encouraged by the fantastic findings in the Hawk Cave, they tirelessly continue their explorations. Some places of the island can only be reached with cross-country vehicles, and even that doesn't always do. Most of the island is explored on foot. Each finding of a potential cave entrance is examined more closely and often very cautiously while these potential entrances are only too often the territory of one or other less jolly company, although the team appears to have luck so far. Yeah, man.
One of the speleologists once is scared out of his wits when stopped by a cobweb in the bush. Fortunately, most spiders on Socotra are not poisonous. Socotra has a large potential of caves, as well as two-thirds of the island consist of limestone. The Shabahan Plateau is centrally situated. There also nomadic tribes wander about with their cattle. The Socotra Karst project has all necessary allowances at its disposal for speleological investigations on the island. Helped by these documents, they try to dispel the suspicion of the locals, which doesn't work very well, while most of them are unable to read or to write. All scientific research on the island is to be done in consultation with a number of Yemeni government services responsible for the protection, the development and the conservation of the island. But their support doesn't guarantee success. A local chief denied the team to enter a very promising cave. The team basically refused to pay the price of 30 euros. Another solution is to be found. For the same price of 30 euros, firstly asked, Chief is even willing now to slaughter a goat sufficient to provide fresh meat for the team. The entrance of the Jineba cave is a huge vanishing point where two rivers come together and stream into the underground. A first squat goes down quite smoothly and starts an underground exploration. The sizes of the entrance lead to suspect that this cave might be huge. During the rainy season, two rivers stream here into the cave. But in former times, the original course of the river was straight on. Nobody can guess where this water goes. When the first squat is back, they report. Mega! Ongelooflijk groot. We zijn gestopt in een zaal waar we. We hebben zitten zoeken, we zijn verloren gelopen in die zaal. We hebben het vervolg in de zaal niet gevonden. Maar zo verschrikkelijk hier, zo weinig zuurstof. 30 graden, moeilijk vertalen. Als je een beetje wilt afkoelen, dus in bloot bovenaan. Het enige wat je kunt doen is totaal uitgestrekt op een blok gaan liggen. Hier wordt zoveel mogelijk en dan een paar keren gaan verliegen. En dan hebben we wat terug vissen en kunnen we weer. Dan is er een kommetje direct vol met zweet. U zweet ongelooflijk. En we hebben dus van binnen naar de ingang teruggemeten. En uh, we schatten niet van een kilometer hebben we getopografeerd. Maar nee, ah ja, ongelooflijk goed. Hè. Dat is de zaal waar we in gestopt zijn. En Deze tuinen. We weten gewoon Afmetingen niet... Afmetingen waarschijnlijk 100 meter, 200 meter we, is moeilijk te zien. Kun je geen, uh, geen cirkel, ah, kun je geen ja, maar, grote kring maken? Nee, we waren al zo ver, we waren aan het zoeken, we waren ze ja. weg kwijt. Ook in, ja, in de zaal zelf. Maar als je nu langs de buitenkant Tuurlijk. Dan blijft, Tuurlijk, moet je is, het doen. Ja, er is een, het een oplossing, doen, ja. maar wij hebben nu continu bezig geweest en we waren dus Prachtig. net op tijd al gezien. Ja. We zijn met een donker hier aangekomen. Hè. Of waar moeten we hier nog twee weken blijven? <laughs> Omdat het topografeert, dat kun je niet zomaar opnemen. Nee, dit ook niet. Nu, ja. het, je gaat een siphon door en dan de geweldige zaal echt naar boven en daar is het ongelooflijk heet. The cave looks very much like an enormous tube tunnel, about 50 meters wide. Relatively short near the entrance, there is a gigantic chamber our photo and film team tried to capture an almost impossible chore. Alleen aan de echo kun je weten dat het ruim is. Dit is onder het wat. Kijk, vanaf hier kan ik zelfs Erik niet meer zien staan met mijn videocamera. 
Is it close? Huh? The soil of this chamber consists of immense blocks, some as large as houses. After measuring, the chamber appears to have a diameter of about 250 meters. Huge masses of water have shaped this underground world by a never-ending process of erosion and corrosion. It's better to avoid this cave during the raining season. The watermark on the walls tells speleologists that this cave periodically gets almost as good as totally filled up. Dus, ik ben op het einde van de zaal geweest. Nee, een Porsche. Recht op recht, een paar honderd meter. Ginder calcietafvloeingen, watervalken op beneden. Prachtig. Koel van temperatuur, redelijk horizontale bodem en kilometers, kilometers waarschijnlijk. This chamber is but the beginning. Some searching throughout the huge blocks leads to an impressive sequel. A small cascade brings some necessary chill in this tropical cave. During the first Socotra expedition, the team had penetrated into this cave for about three kilometers. But lack of time stopped them, although the cave still continues. Even before leaving the island, plans are already being made for the next expedition. The exploration of the Geneva cave will need several expeditions. It takes two years before restarting. The World Trade Center attacks complicate setting out this region, but this time the team can enter the Geneva cave without too many problems. This time the exploration gets on pretty well. The main part of the sequel is explored swimming. Here also everything is mapped at once. Their notes time and again tell the same story. This world doesn't stop. 34 After about seven kilometers, they knock up against an apparent dead end. Some investigation makes clear only divers can continue. Although the speleologists believe this culvert to be rather short, it unfortunately remains too long to pass without oxygen cylinders. Being so eager to continue, they start a dive training, being not sure whether the culvert would be short or long, or in the worst case, the sequel being totally submerged. Still, Rudy hopes the culvert might be but a short barrier. An 
Irish camp. Oh yeah. Het <laughs> ja, is de CIA toestand. Rudy beers up and reinforces the trust in the cave adventure. Everything is being prepared to re-enter the cave. Their load is twice as heavy as before and it is to be carried into the cave over seven kilometers to and fro. is overcome quite rapidly, soon the rest of the team follows. Carl is the one here to film their reactions. The ensuing expedition gives a clear picture of the total size of the cave. This time the Geneva cave has been completely explored and, being longer than 13 kilometers, appears to be the largest one in the Middle East area. Putting the cave plan on the map of Socotra, one readily sees the scale of the cave. The surface terrain has also been explored and so they find a spot where the cave possibly returns to the surface. The two kilometers remaining part of the cave probably being underwater, reappears here on the ground. In a later stage, color proofs can be made to demonstrate effectively the actual link. The resurgence, or the place where the water reappears at the surface, is situated in a gorge where a part of the resurgence water is used as drinking water. The Socotra Karst project has helped the inlanders already before to provide them drinking water by locating underground water supplies. A simple system of water pipes did often do to supply water for the necessary cisterns. The principle of the communicating vessels does the rest. Also underwater, several things have been mapped. A seemingly ordinary little lake appears to be an underground chamber, the roof of which has collapsed. It's been slowly filled with water afterwards when the sea levels started to rise. This is called a cenote. Dirk and Eric, the diving speleologists of the team, want to investigate this underwater cave more closely. Helped by the villagers, they sink a stone with a rope to the bottom of the lake, probably an unusual performance for the locals. They are greatly amazed looking at the fully equipped divers. They also are eager to know which secrets their lake could yield up. Dirk Handling the underwater camera, we'll go down with Eric via the rope to the bottom of this cenote. They want to check if it's linked with the sea. They quickly sink into the unknown.
Suddenly, as from one moment to the other, the good view changes into something that looks like grenadine. All of a sudden, the water gets turbid. This phenomenon is called a thermocline. It's the transition zone between surface water and deep water caused by the change of temperature. At a depth of 37 meters, they reach the bottom of this cenote. On the bottom, there is nothing but deposit and mud. At a depth of 22 meters, the water gets clear again. A side gallery goes on for some 10 meters right under the mosque of the village. The Spelio divers of the Socotra Karst project have explored several underwater caves throughout the island and we surely don't want to withhold you the prettiest underwater shots. <laughs> Underground diving is technically quite more complicated than regular diving. Getting lost here is fatal. Wreck diving is somehow compatible. It also requires very cautious moving forward to avoid upwhirling dust. A thin but solid rope is the only guideline through this labyrinth. Sometimes, without any visibility, the thin wire is the only help to find the exit. Several enigmas discovered by the speleologists during the last seven years remain unsolved. Mysterious drawings and symbols have been found deep into the caves work enough for years at least. Also above ground, the team found strange signs and figures. Socotra has all but given in. These carvings could be elements of a secret map only to be read by the islanders. Nobody can tell who made them, nor when. Through ages, several cultures have existed on Socotra, each one leaving their own marks behind, of which caves are often the silent witnesses and not always as agreeable. Het is de moeite man. 
Maar uh, of dat Portugees zijn, dat weet ik niet. Hè. Ik heb het tot niet gevraagd. Hundreds of skeletons and skulls in layers upon each other. And again, no one knows who they were nor how they came here. The islanders pass on their sagas and legends, but nobody knows the origin of these skeletons. Socotra can safely be defined as exceptional and magnificent, not at least from a speleological, but mainly a cultural and human point of view. Man and nature live here in harmony with their surroundings. Although things have gradually been changing for the last few years, and great challenges are to be expected. Let's hope not only these pictures to be the manifest proof of their rich cultural past. Also here, commercial interests are lurking, meaning a real threat for the future. One can't stop this evolution, of course, and it undoubtedly will also involve its positive effects. Let's hope that progress improves the situation of the Soko tree, the people of the island. Their culture and traditions are to be preserved so to enable the next generations to expose proudly their identity. Nobody knows better the soil they live on than the islanders themselves. Supported by the Yemeni authorities, this man is able to develop a growing program so to save threatened plant varieties from extinction. No one of the team could have presumed how great this story would become. More than 30 kilometers of caves have been mapped. Nothing is more beautiful than a group of kindred spirits with an equal passion. Go where no one else has gone before.